Welcome to Restoration. I'm Rabbi Matt. So glad you could join us on this online Shabbat. We're glad to have so many people who tagged in with our Passover Seder, our one hour Passover um, and the series uh, Jesus Never Said Anything New, as well as so many people who are purchasing my book and sharing the book. Um, it's just been an awesome season and we're so grateful for all of our friends from all over the place. Uh, who have connected with us in this season. And for those of you who are members and regular attenders of uh, of Restoration, we're so glad you're here. And good news, we are starting our regular Shabbat services again sometime in the month of May. We'll give you the date as we get a little closer and still sort out a few things, but we're excited to get our regular Shabbat services in order and because of that we're going to not have an extra service for the day of shavuot which is monday uh, may 17th but we do encourage you to take that day off of work and celebrate it we're not going to have a regular uh, a special service for that day um, because uh, trying to get our regular services back in order is uh, quite enough but as we get towards the day of shavuot which many of you know as Pentecost, the last 14 days uh, of the counting of the 50 days of Omer, which today is the 13th day of the counting of the Omer, uh, the last 14 days of the counting of the Omer, uh, Rabbi Ibars is, is uh, producing a devotional for those 14 days leading to Shavuot, and it'll be available on our website and Facebook and on our app and wherever you connect with us. So pay attention to uh, to all those things to see when our devotional is coming out leading to Shavuot. For this new series that we're starting today called Completely Other, instead of doing our regular connect groups that we've been doing over Zoom, we're going to uh, have a Bible study format over the next six weeks. And if you'd like to be a part of a question and answer on Zoom with me throughout this series on Thursday nights, um, at 6 p.m. Pacific time, uh, you can join with a link on Zoom, and you can find that all in our social media um, and wherever you connect with us. Just look for question and answer with Rabbi Matt, and we would love to have you join us for uh, six weeks to kind of flesh out and dig deeper into this important sermon series, which is taking us to Shavuot. And so talking about the rest, the other six, the six of the last six of the Ten Commandments is bringing us to the day of Shavuot. We'll finish this series uh, the Saturday before um, Shavuot. So we encourage you to participate with us. And uh, if, if you're a member or regular attender of Restoration, you know, uh, we're supported by tithes and offerings, and those who participate from other places, if you'd like to give, you're certainly uh, welcome to do so. So today, we start a new series, which is attached, actually, connected, really a continuation of the series we started the year 2021 with, called Completely Other, which talked about idolatry uh, and the first four of the Ten Commandments. Now we're finishing that series out as we get towards the day of, we pass Passover and we move towards the day of Shavuot. We finish the Ten Commandments with the other six. And you remember in the series Completely Other, we talked about Leviticus chapter 19 uh, in, in, in verse 2, where Moses, the Lord says through Moses, speak to the congregation of the sons of Israel and tell them, you shall be a holy people, for I, Adonai, your God, am holy. We talked about how holy in English throughout the whole series, completely other, we talked about how the word holy is not really a good English translation, rather completely other. You shall be completely other because I am completely other. There's nothing in creation that is equal to God. And in the same sense, there's nothing in creation that is equal to us. God is completely other from everything that he's created. He stands outside of his creation, and he has made us to be completely other in creation from everything in creation. And so he tells us to be completely other as he is completely other. 
So we talked about the first four commandments in the series Completely Other, and now we talk about the other six. Exodus chapter 20, uh, verse 12 says, Honor your father and mother so that your days may be long upon the land which Adonai your God is giving you. Do not murder, do not commit adultery, do not steal, do not bear false witness against your neighbors. Do not covet your neighbor's house, your neighbor's wife, his manservant, his maidservant, his ox, his donkey, or anything that is your neighbor. Now, th throughout this series, uh, I'm going to kind of attach this thought from my friend, Pastor Tim Ross, who preached an incredible message for us last week on the word Dayenu. And his sentence is, you medicate what you can't articulate. And really throughout this whole series, the other six, we're going to talk about how that connects to each of these six commandments. Because we find ourselves not being able to express things or understand things or have self-awareness for the underlying issues that create sin in our lives. And so we medicate them because we can't articulate them. Now, the, the Ten Commandments are, are set up um, in, in a very simple way. The, the first four of the Ten Commandments are, are, are really between our behavior between people and God. The last six, the other six, are, are the behavior between people and others. And as we talked about in this series, Completely Other, the first three commandments are all about idolatry. The keeping of Shabbat is the great deterrent from uh, committing idolatry. And then the other six break down how we're supposed to relate to each other. The, the famous words of Yeshua when he sums up the commandments in Matthew chapter uh, 22, uh, he was asked, what is the greatest commandment? And he said to them, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. This is the first and the greatest commandment. And the second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. The entire Torah and the prophets hang on these two commandments. In the series we just finished on my book, Jesus Never Said Anything New, I did a message on these two commandments and how everything hangs on these two. And this isn't a new idea. Jesus didn't come up with this idea. The Jewish people and the prophets before him had been summing up the Torah all along, and other rabbis were teaching exactly the same thing, that all the commandments come down to these two because it's the setup of the Ten Commandments. There's two parts to the Ten Commandments, how you relate to God and how you relate to people. It's as old as the commandments themselves. And so when Jesus said it, his Jewish followers, when Yeshua says it, his Jewish followers said, yeah, oh yeah, we know that. Love the Lord your God with all this. Yeah, we know how that works. And there's something cool about this first of the other six, which is the fifth commandment, to honor your father and mother, which is the name of the message this morning. Honor your father and and mother, it's really a transitional commandment. This is so fascinating. Exodus chapter 20 and verse 12 says, Honor your father and mother so that your days may be long upon the land which Adonai, your God, is giving you. So if you think about from tradition, the way it's always drawn, the, the, the scripture tells us there were two tablets of stone. And, and so Jewish tradition tells us that on each tablet there's five commandments. And that means honor your father and mother is the fur is the is the fifth uh, on the one on the first tablet, and then the other commandments six through ten go on the next tablet. And it's interesting because those first four commandments are about how we are to love God, but on the side of loving God, we find the fifth commandment to honor your father and your mother. But we also understand that the six, the other six, as we're talking about, and the fifth commandment being the first of the other six, are uh, dictate how we are to love others and relate to other people. And so if you take these two tablets, and on the first tablet, there's the, the fifth commandment is a bridge between the two tablets, and it kind of works in the first set. Honor your father and mother is on the love your God side of the tablets. Because how you relate to your parents is often how we end up relating to God. 
but but it's also included in the six commandments the other six it's the first of the other six in the second set because how you relate to your parents is often how you relate to other people and and it's hard because some of us had good parents some of us have great parents some of us had terrible parents some of us had abusive parents and so if there's all this spectrum of what kind of parent, well, it's easier for me to honor my parents because my parents are great people and they taught me to love God and they love each other. It should be easier to honor them where some have awful relationships with their parents and horrible things that were done to them by their parents. Some of you have experienced awful pain. And so this idea of honoring parents is hard to do. H.com says it this way in an article uh, on honoring your parents. It says the mitzvah, the commandment of honoring your parents, does not depend on what your parents did for you or even whether they were good parents. Rather, we honor parents simply because they gave us the gift of life. It's it's so interesting to think about a, a phrase in, in the Talmud from the, the writings of the rabbis. They, the, the Midrash is there are three parts to the creation of you. There's God, there's your mother, and there's your father. It's the combination of those three that creates you. And the word honor, honor your father and mother, the word honor is the Hebrew word kavod. And it really means weight. It's like, it's like heavy. There's like a, a weight to carry. Uh, you carry weight when you honor someone or something. And honor is supposed to be given. It's not supposed to be demanded. And often honor is demanded by people who really don't deserve honor. And the rabbi Ben Zoma says, uh, in the sayings of our fathers, he said, who is honored, he who, honored the, he who honors others. Another place in the Talmud says this, it's not the place that a man occupies that gives him honor, but the man gives honor to the place that he occupies. When I was a kid, I have ADHD. I got in trouble a lot. And my mom created this back and forth between us when I was a kid and when I would get in trouble and she would tell me what I was supposed to do uh, I, sh and I would say I don't want to do it or I would be disrespectful or, or I would be frustrated and I would and my mom would pause and she's a short little Italian lady and I don't know what your experience is but having a mother who's a short Italian her size doesn't really matter her eyes are like 10 feet tall and there's like this look that makes you step back no matter what size you are and she would pause and she would look at me and she would say because i am the mom and then she'd wait for my response which was supposed to be and wait until i said and i am the boy see there's this this uh, line of thought, there's this moment that my mom was creating for me to recognize that it doesn't matter what I think or what I feel. Because in this moment, my mom is correcting me and she's the mom and I'm the boy. Now, Ephesians chapter 6, Paul jumps into this same uh, idea, uh, except here in Ephesians, he's speaking directly to children. In Exodus, it doesn't say children honor your parents. It just says honor your parents, which means it's not a commandment for children only to honor their parents. It's actually a commandment for all people to honor their parents, no matter what age you are, no matter if your parents were good or bad uh, or if your parents are alive or have passed away we honor our parents but paul applies it to children in ephesians 6 as he's going through the family system and he says children obey your parents in the lord for this is right honor your father and mother which is the first commandment with a promise so that it may be well with you and you may live long on the earth 
it does interest me that in the Ten Commandments, in this transition, in this transitional moment between how we relate to God and, and how we relate to people, uh, the transitional moment shifts to the way you're going to treat people. You start with your parents. Why do you start with your parents? Because they gave you life. And they are the first people that we relate to the moment we're born. They're the voice that you hear, the voices that you hear when you're in your mother's womb, you hear them and you recognize them when you come out of your mother's womb. It, it, it's it's uh, 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 the part of the relationship that if God is shifting, okay, I want you to honor me this way, right? Don't use the Lord's, don't carry my name in vain. Uh, don't worship other gods. Don't uh, keep, you know, keep the Shabbat. There's these four commandments. And then he says, and if you're going to love people, the first people you have to start with are the people who gave you life. And there's two promises in the commandment in Exodus that Paul points out when he quotes it. And they are the promise that comes along with honoring your, your mother and father is one, you will have success in life. And two, you will have a long life. Now, then Paul says in Ephesians chapter 6 and verse 4, he shifts to fathers. And this is interesting because in Greek thought, in the Greek-speaking world, right, Ephesians is written in Greek, and Paul's a Roman citizen, and he's writing to all these believers who are influenced by the Greek world. And in the Greek world, children had no rights. They were a nuisance. They were frustrating. They were annoying. And fathers, in particular, had nothing to do with raising their children. The mothers raised the children, and when they came of a certain age, then the fathers would take responsibility to teach them the ways of the world and teach them how to be successful and teach them. But it wasn't until they were older. And Paul, speaking to a Roman world, says, Fathers, do not provoke your children to anger. But bring them up in the discipline and instruction of the Lord. Now, there's several things that are happening here. One, the Greek word for provoke uh, means intentional, uh, insensitive, ignorant. You, you, you can't come at your children. And man, I do this all the time and I hate it. And it's one of the biggest struggles of my life is my kids frustrate me and I get super angry probably because of some old stuff that I'm working out in counseling right now that are from when they were, when I was their age and didn't know how to articulate those things. So I began to medicate those things because we medicate what we can't articulate and I provoke my children and I'm intentionally insensitive. I, I, I'm, I'm ignorant, I'm mean, I'm sarcastic. And, and, and Paul's saying, fathers, don't. Don't provoke your children to anger. Instead, bring them up in discipline and instruction. Now, the word in Greek that's in the TLV that's discipline is actually correction. Correct your children. But don't provoke them to anger. Don't don't be insensitive and, and, and ignorant. Don't 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 correct them like you're such an idiot. I wish you would understand the things that I'm saying. No, he's saying correct them as the Lord corrects us. And the word for, for instruction is really warning and reproof. It's, it, it, it's, it's helping our children to understand that the ability to receive correction is so important for success in life and for longevity in life. It, it makes me think of, of, of the most mistranslated verse in the Hebrew Scriptures, Proverbs 22 and verse 6. If you read the Bible, if you been, grew up and you, your parents use this on you, train up a child in the way he should go, and when he is old, he will not turn from it, is what it says in English. But unfortunately, and some of you have heard me say this before, and it just it keeps coming back into my life uh, these days, uh, David Stern translates it as the, the training you give a child does not leave him when he grows up. And that's true, but what are we training them for? And Paul's saying, fathers, train your children in the discipline of the Lord. But what is discipline? Is it, 
teaching our children when they're babies to memorize scripture? Is it putting Bible verses in their room? Is it is it sneaking the things of God into their cereal and into their life? Like, is it is it tricking them into? And then so many parents have said to me over the years, I taught my children in the way they should go. And when they were old, they did turn from it. Because they're not walking with God now. Am I a bad parent? Did I do something wrong? And the truth is, in Hebrew, Proverbs 22, 6 is what's called an ironic imperative. It's an intentionally ironic statement. And it actually says the opposite of the way it's typically translated in English. And this is going to be hard to connect because I had to say that I had to go through my, my professor, Hebrew professor in seminary said this to me 20 years ago. And I think about it all the time. He, his translation is let a novice go in the direction he's going. And when he is old, he will not turn from it. And the idea here is if it is a novice, which I mean, a novice is a newbie, right? A novice is somebody who's growing in knowledge but doesn't know a whole lot. It's like a rookie, right? It's just, I mean, a novice in our culture is a teenager. It's not a child. And we know as part of a teenage experience and adolescence in our, in our culture, if a teenager doesn't learn to receive correction from their parents, they will have difficulty receiving correction from anyone. This is why in our culture, the issue of authority is such a hard thing to, for people to deal with. Because we're Americans and we don't like to be told what to do. And we don't like to have people tell us what we're supposed to do. The problem is, <laughs> we probably didn't learn correction when we were kids. And, and what Proverbs is actually saying, let them go in the direction they're currently going, as in don't correct them. Don't correct your teenager. And when they are old, they will never receive correction. Now, in my generation, parents translated that as spanking. Okay, I, wherever you stand on that issue, that's not the point either. It's not the harshness of the punishment that matters. It's the idea of correction so that they can learn to be to receive correction now and be able to receive correction this is the connection between honoring your father and mother and seeing success and longevity in life how does honor our parents equal success how does honor our parents equal long life if you honor your parents a certain way does god give you extra years no it's a principle of wisdom. If you can learn to receive correction at a young age from your parents, you will learn to receive correction from authorities in your life for the rest of your life. And it will bring you success and it will give you long life because you will know how to receive correction. This is the struggle of the whole book of Proverbs is pros Proverbs are not promises. They're wisdom. They're principles for wisdom. A promise means I promise you that this is going to work out exactly the way you want it to or the, exactly the way that it is written. And that's not what the Proverbs are for. This is why people struggle with, I taught my children the things of God and they walked away. Or if my adult child doesn't follow the Lord, did I not correct him enough? Was I a bad parent? Am I a bad parent? Robert Alter in his commentary in the Hebrew Bible sa says this uh, in his commentary on the Ten Commandments in Exodus. He says, it's hard to square the casual link between honoring parents and longevity with empirical observation. One probably has to regard this as part of the traditional wisdom of the ancient Near East, a sort of Hopeful moral calculus reflected in the book of Proverbs. See, the promise, Paul says, it's the commandment, first commandment with the promise. Honor your father and mother and it will go well with you in the land. It doesn't mean if you're disrespectful. People, people always say to me as a rat, messy and rabbi, if you keep the Torah, does that mean if your children are disrespectful, do you stone them? 
listen, in recorded history of the nation of Israel, there's no record of us stoning any of our children. It doesn't show up. And the reason why it doesn't show up is because if stoning was as simple as being disrespectful to your parents, none of us would have made it out of our childhood. The, the implication in the Torah, even with the stoning, is that the, the, it's an adult son who has run away from the things of God and totally abandoned God and totally abandoned everything his parents taught him in, within the nation of Israel and has left and must be cut from among us. But even then, we don't stone our children for walking away. And you shouldn't blame yourself or your adult children walking away. They're adults. They make decisions. And just because they don't take your advice at this point in their lives doesn't mean you were bad. The, the truth is it's never as simple as we're good or bad. It, it's never that black and white. There's a lot of gray. And, and some of you are even thinking, how could I honor my parents, Rabbi Matt? My parents were awful. And they didn't even raise me to know God. They abused me. Some of you were physically abused and sexually abused. And, and some of you were emotionally abused. You were totally disregarded. Not paid attention to at all. You, you, your relationship with your parents then and your relationship with your parents now, if they're still alive or if they've passed away, just doesn't exist. And this is what I want you to hear. The commandment of honoring your parents does not depend on whether your parents, on what your parents did for you, or even whether they were good parents. Rather, we honor our parents simply because they gave us life. This is the goal that we create successful and healthy people who are successful and healthy in their relationships both with God and with people. And correction is a part of carrying the weight of honor. So how do we honor our parents? I'll just give you three ways that we can honor our parents. Good parents, bad parents. The first way to honor parents is this phrase, which is going to frustrate many of you. And the phrase is, point one, how do you honor your parents? Everyone is doing the best they can with what they have. Now, I, I got this phrase from Brene Brown in, in her book, Rising Strong. And, and, and she talked about her, her counselor said to her at one point, uh, everyone is doing the best they can with what they have. And she said, they are not because I'm not doing the best with what I have. And, and then she's a researcher and a shame researcher specifically. And so they researched. The question, do people believe that everyone is doing the best they can? And what they found is the people who believe that everyone was doing the best they can with what they have were able to give themselves grace because they knew that they were doing the best they could. And it didn't always work out the way they wanted it to. The people who couldn't handle the phrase or didn't believe everyone was doing the best they can with what they have didn't think they were doing the best with what they had and they couldn't give themselves any grace. Here's the truth. It doesn't matter if the sentence is true or not. If you can live like everyone is doing the best they can with what, you're ha with what they have, your life will be better because you'll start to be able to look at people with their best intentions and not with offense and not with pain and not with hurt and not like everybody is trying to get you where everybody is trying to make your life awful. The way we can honor our parents is to be able to look back on our childhoods and on their lives, say, you know, I really think they were doing the best they could with what they had. And I realize the pain and the struggle that would come for those of you who have parents that did awful things to you. But so often, 
those awful things were also done to them. And they couldn't get out of the trauma that they experienced. You have an opportunity to come out of that cycle of trauma. And part of getting out of that cycle is looking back and saying, I think they were doing the best they could. But they. The second way we can honor our parents is to be grateful for life, even if that's all they gave you. Be grateful for life, even if that's all they gave you. Uh, some of our parents, that's all they gave us. They just gave us life. But you're not here without them. And in fact, part of the struggle of getting older is we look like them and we walk like them and we sound like them. And we saw, man, one of my favorite commercials, set of commercials right now is the progressive commercials where they're teaching people to not sound like their parents after they buy a home and they're walking through stores and they're, you know, they start, you start to say things, you say things to your children that your parents said to you that you promised you would never say, but we do say those things. But you can be grateful that they gave you life. In fact, we don't, you know, in Judaism, we don't worship our ancestors, but we do go back through who our people are and what we get from them. And uh, my mom, I was talking to my mom uh, after our Passover Seder and they watched our my parents watched our, our one hour Passover and, and my mom just said it was, you know, it's just fun to see you getting older and I could see like my mom's eyes in the roundness of your eyes and I, I could hear my grandfather's voice and, and some of the things you're saying and I can, and because she knew them, part of the honor is whether we, we had good relationships with them or bad relationships with them, they're still a part of who we are. And this leads us to the third way to honor our parents is you can take the good and leave the bad. There's all kinds of things in every, in the best of families and in the best of relationships uh, between parents and children, there's bad things. Uh, part of the struggle is it's not, it's not as black and white as we want it to be. It's not just they were either good or they were bad. It's a whole lot of good and a whole lot of bad at the same time. And part of it in honoring our, our parents is to take the good but leave behind the bad. And here's the thing I learned from my counselor just recently. The people who hurt you don't need to understand your hurt for you to be healed. If your pain and hurt is from your parents, they don't need to understand the specifics of all the ways they hurt you for you to heal. You can heal as you understand so you can stop med medicating. You don't medicate, but you can't articulate as you articulate these things and understand the bad that comes along with being their child. You can stop medicating yourself with all the things you medicate yourselves to get over the pain because they just don't understand and they won't understand and it doesn't matter if they understand. For some of you, your parents passed many years ago and they couldn't understand. You couldn't even have, you wish you could explain it to them, but you don't need people to understand your pain for God to heal your pain. Ah. Uh, my parents both come from, well, my dad comes from a family of neglect and my, my mom comes from a family of abuse. And I, I asked my dad, how do you honor your parents in though they neglected you their whole lives, your whole life? My dad said, you know, I have his earliest memory is his parents singing in synagogue. And my dad's a great singer. And when he sings liturgy, he honors his parents because it's their voices that he hears in his head when he sings. And the gift of his voice 
comes from his parents. Now, they didn't believe it, <laughs> the things that we sing. They certainly didn't live it. But they still gave it to him. And he still sings. Every Shabbat to this day, and every time he sings, he honors There's something good that your parents gave you, that one of your parents gave you, that you can still use in your life as you take the good and leave the bad that you can use to honor your parents. Proverbs 3 is this amazing chapter in the book of Proverbs, and it's famous among Bible readers because of the verses we all know. Trust in the Lord with all your heart, lean on your understanding, and all your ways acknowledge him, and he will direct your path. But it's actually the verses around those verses that speak to honor. It says in Proverbs 3, verse 3, My son, do not forget my teaching, but let your heart keep my mitzvot for length of days and years of life and peace will add to you. I mean, where did the author of Proverbs get that from? All right, the Ten Commandments. Let kindness and truth never leave you. Bind them around your neck and write them on the tablet of your heart. Then you will gain favor and a good name in the eyes of God and demand. Both sides of the tablet. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. And lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge him. And he will make your path straight. Do not be wise in your own eyes. Fear the Lord and turn away from evil. It will be healing to your body. And refreshment to your bones. Honor Adonai with your wealth. And with the first of your harvest. And your barns will be filled with plenty. And your vats will overflow with new wine. Verse 11. My son... Never despise the Lord's discipline or dread his correction. For Adonai loves those he reproves, even as a father, son, and whom he There's a simple way to earn favor in the eyes of God and the eyes of man. It's kind of like a moral calculus. It's not an exact. It, it doesn't always work out exactly the way we want it to. It, it's wisdom principle. It's not a promise. It's not this plus this equals this. But you want to be a person who has favor in the eyes of God and the eyes of man. You have to, one, learn to receive correction, and two, learn not to despise correction. Because if you can learn to receive correction and not despise correction, then you will have long life and peace will be added to you. It's the people who refuse to receive correction at all from anyone that miss the blessing that comes, the weight that we carry and the honor our Father come and who start us in our relationship with God, how we understand our relationship with God, and also how we relate to other. Love God and love your neighbor as yourself really come down to how we honor Mother, our Father, and to honor my parents and to honor my, my grandparents I, I want to sing the ironic benediction over you and over my children and over my family that we could be people who learn to receive correction that it will go well with us and give us long life and success in our relationships with God and with people Yivrech ech Adonai Veishmerechu Yoer Adonai panam lecha Vichunecha Yisei Adonai Panam lecha 
ויוזם לרעות שלום. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. In the name of Yeshua, our Messiah, we pray. Amen. Next week, we'll talk about why it's a terrible idea to murder people. Shabbat Shalom.